Hi, Joy. I hope everything's going well with you. It's been a couple months since we chatted and a lot of stuff has changed. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is uh, really get a better understanding of your perspective on the role of technology and connectivity as we all deal with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Sean, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. The COVID-19 crisis has shown that people depend on the internet now more than ever. Connectivity is essential for people to check in with their family and friends, work remotely, take classes online, and much more. During these difficult times, connectivity has truly become a lifeline. Take virtual meetings as an example. Zoom has reported 300 million daily meeting participants, a 30 time increase from December. In terms of healthcare, Teledoc has reported they're providing over 20,000 virtual doctor visits every day in the US. A 100% increase from first week of March. It has also been inspiring to see people are collaborating online to give back to their communities, providing food and supplies to people in need and recognizing the hard work from healthcare professionals and other essential workers. Given the increased importance of connectivity during this time, do you think that countries will re-examine the importance of 5G rollouts? Absolutely. This crisis has demonstrated how critical high-speed connectivity is. During the outbreak, we saw mobile internet traffic increase 30% in China, fixed network traffic increased 70% in Italy. Data traffic increased 50% in Germany. Hundreds of millions of people are working from home. Peak hours have extended from several hours to almost 15 hours a day. People need high broadband connectivity all the time. Carriers around the world are taking all kinds of measures to meet capacity and coverage needs. For example, Vodafone has increased their capacity across the entire network in Europe. They're improving the Wi-Fi coverage to deal with traffic surge. And they also retain additional spectrum resources for emergency use. Chinese operators completed a 4G expansion in one of the cities in just one day and they provided 5G coverage to a new hospital in Wuhan within three days. 5G has the potential to transform all industries. It will also have a significant impact on countries and cities, emergency response services and tracking systems. Some countries has recently released new policies to enhance ICT infrastructure. For example, South Korea is increasing their 5G investment by 50% in the first half of 2020. Belgium has announced fiber investment would account for 40% of the total ICT investment till 2025. And Ireland had an urgent 5G spectrum release within three days. These reflected the sense of urgency from governments around the world. While there's a temporary slowdown of 5G rollout due to the lockdown in some areas, as those get lifted, we'll see the 5G rollout quickly ramping up. So what benefits will 5G technology bring specifically to healthcare? The ultra fast speeds of 5G will usher in some incredible advancement in the healthcare industry. The ability to share huge amounts of data within mere seconds will allow doctors to treat patients remotely through telemedicine or even remote surgery. Home care providers will be able to access resources from hospitals much more easily. With the support of high bandwidth, 5G will also open the door for new types of AI healthcare applications, 
that can process a lot of data very quickly. I can give you an example how it is being used right now to fight COVID-19. One of the key symptoms of severe COVID-19 patients is the change of the lung structure, which can only be detected by a CT scan. On average, it takes about 12 minutes for a specialist to read a CT scan and make the diagnosis. Huawei is using a combination of AI and specialists. So AI-assisted diagnosis will only take about 10 seconds, and the result can be confirmed by a specialist within two minutes. So we're increasing the speed by six times. We're working with over 100 hospitals around the world for this solution. Another example is AI temperature monitoring system that is being used by some airports and train stations. It can detect about 10 people per second. So a 50 times increase on efficiency. We'll see more and more 5G and AI applications. I look forward to seeing how 5G helps reshape the healthcare industry and our society at large. Joy, what role will modern networks and reliable connectivity play in the post-COVID world? Sean, that's a very good question. Many companies are starting to rethink about how they do business, considering different ways that technology can help them get more things done. Remote and flexible work arrangement will continue to be embraced in many industries. Networking events and conferences will increasingly move online. While large gatherings like live concerts and sporting events will eventually resume, those industries have also seen an increased appetite for engaging with fans virtually and interacting in new ways. The rollout of 5G will provide consumers with seamless connectivity experience for all their online activities. Joy, can you share an update of Huawei's 5G rollouts around the globe? Sure. As of today, 73 operators in 41 countries have launched 5G networks. Huawei has signed 91 commercial contracts, 47 in Europe, 27 in Asia, and 17 from other regions. We're supporting 49 live networks. Huawei is also leading the industry from the shipment perspective. In Asia, Huawei has implemented 5G network in South Korea, the Philippines, and Thailand, and along with helping China roll out one of the largest networks in the world. China is projecting to reach 600,000 base stations by the end of 2020. In Europe, we're encouraged by the decision from European Commission and the UK, enabling Huawei to continue to participate in the region's 5G rollout. In the US, Huawei is essentially excluded from participating in the US market. However, the company has offered to license the entire suite of 5G technology to a US company to help roll out a 5G network in the US. So Joy, how is COVID-19 impacting Huawei's global operations? First and foremost, Huawei is committed to the health of its employees customers, and partners. With prevention in mind, Huawei is working closely with and following the recommendations of public health professionals and enacting daily risk assessments to ensure its global offices are combating the spread of coronavirus effectively. Aside from the brief period that factory were closed in China due to government requirements, there has been minimal direct impact from coronavirus on Huawei's supply chain. Currently, all our manufacturing facilities are back to full capacity. I recently watched a video from the Shanghai Ballet Company where the dancers have gone back to work and wearing face masks 
during practice for safety. I was inspired to see how they were determined to continue to practice to deliver amazing performance for their audience sometime in the future. This video was widely shared by our colleagues around the world. It encourages us to face difficulties and challenges with a positive attitude. Never give up, even in adversity. This is the same kind of perseverance Huawei has had for the last 30 years to deliver some of the best technologies for the world. We'll continue to push forward with grit and determination to deliver value for our customers and the entire society. Joy, it was really good to uh, catch up with you. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about the role that technology plays during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Sean, it was really good talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.